Um, I call upon all the um, panel and and the keynote uh, speaker uh, to the stage. Um, Honorable Dato uh, Nur Azman Taib, give um, applause to our speaker. Um, and then Mr. Martin, Martin Ick from Youth Delegate Norway. Mr. Roman Chikov, Friends of Cities, um, Russia. And then uh, Ms. Uh, Zainab Al Ali, Director, Youth Initiative, Masdar UAE, I think still not here. And then uh, later Mr. Rafael Obonio, the Youth Congress Kenya will, will join us. So, okay, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to all of you for this session. This is the uh, World Urban Forum Wolf 10 2020 for site event under the topic of governance. So make sure you are at the right um, place and topics. So thank you for your time. Um, you myself. My name, is, my name is Muhammad Maliki Muhammad Rafi'i. You can call me Maliki. Um, it was Arab name, but I not Arab. <laughs> I, I, my original place is Malaysia, um, in Kuala Lumpur. Now, I am the director uh, of um, International Youth Center or IYC. This is the center uh, and the foundation um, as a youth hub under the Ministry of Youth and Sports Malaysia. Uh, we are located in Kuala Lumpur. If you heard about um, Twin Tower Petronas, Petronas Twin Tower, we only eight kilometers from my place. So from my, my window, I can see the tower, but we are not a tower, we only have space. Uh, we have the facilities, we have the program and the expert in youth develop, development. And um, so for today, we will talk about governance. It's very important in youth development because we need to have a um, source of um, our action from where, uh, how we, are, we want to setting our, our action and, 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 and uh, planning. So today, um, we have the panel here, uh, now two panels, but before that, um, we have Honorable Dr. M. Nur Azman Taib. Deputy Secretary General, Ministry of Youth and Sports Malaysia. Um, Dato Azman um, will share with you about what is um, the framework of Malaysian government um, when they talk about um, governance, uh, what is how the policy um, implementing, uh, and then what is the um, um, real problem within youth. So I think this is the best place to us to share everything. Um, and you can raise your hand, you can ask anything um, to us, and we can share um, for the benefit of our, our, our group today. Um, uh, Dato, are you ready for this? Okay, thank you Dato. So I give you uh, within uh, not more than 10 minutes Dato, uh, to uh, address your speech. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Maliki Muhammad Rafi, Director International Youth Center Foundation Kuala Lumpur. I try to make it a simple, but uh, not uh, more than 15 minutes, or I try to be uh, 10 minutes. Uh, distinguished guests, uh, panelists, ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, I wish to convey my utmost gratitude to International Youth Center, or IYC, for this effort, organizing this site event for the governance youth. The government. Please allow me also to convey my special session to the government of the United Arab Emirates for being fantastic host to the 10 World Urban Forum. I would like to thank the government of UAE for the warm hospitality accorded to the delegate in the beautiful city of Abu Dhabi. So the gov a government in simple would refer to the way how organizations or countries are governed at the highest level. Highest level of activity such as the etab establishment of policy and continuous monitoring of proper implementation with the aim of producing desired outcomes. It involves series of consultation to ensure that such policy bring benefit to its people and to the country at large. 
this the idealism behind the notion of democracy, where majority rules, but the voice of minority must also be heard. It is a duty of the government to ensure that the interest, interest of minority is not left behind. So our focus is today's event in the role of youth organizations and independent oversight bodies is to preventing violence and crime. So the role could include receiving, investigating, and rectifying grievances, and at the same time, strengthening the good governance of peace and justice institution in the context of meeting sustainable development goal SDG 16. So the 2030 agenda focuses on the partnership as an important principle of implementation. In, in this context, the discourse on, on national institutions ought to be expanded toward other stakeholders that form the modern day social compact, such as the private sector, the markets, academia and the education sector, civil societies and non-governmental -government, organizations, and a new force that is growing important around the world, the youth. They are the vital component that ensure there is proper check and balance in power between the stakeholders as well as feedback for effective governance. So ladies and gentlemen, in Malaysia, just to share, after playing a major role in the previous general election, youth have now found itself with greater power as well as responsibilities following the passing of the constitutional amendment that lower the voting age from 21 to 18. As a new growing force of the modern day social compact, more people do need to acknowledge and comprehend the youth perspective, particularly in the field of public policy. At the same time, youth need to prepare and ask themselves more important questions on their role in advocating and pressing for institution reforms. So the Ministry of Youth and Sport Malaysia strongly believe that youth can shoulder bigger rules, hence many efforts are undertaken to empower them. Our minister himself, the Honorable Said Sadiq Said Rahman, at only 27, is a role model of what youth can achieve. The minister has also launched Youth Power Agenda, believing that the sky is the limit for youth if they can be given opportunities and right trainings. Two very significant decisions have been passed in the July 2019 sitting of the Parliament of Malaysia which involve the interests interest of youth. One is the amendment of the Youth Society and Youth Development Act. With the passing of the amendment, the age of youth is lower from 40 years old to 30 years old in Malaysia. So making youth is thus defined an age between 15 to 30 years old. Second is the amendment to the federal constitution to lower the voting age from 21 years old to 18 years old. In addition, the parliament has also agreed to lower the eligible age of electoral candidates to 18 and automatic registration of voters. I would like to take this opportunity to share briefly with, the, uh, with you the various youth empowerment programs conducted by my ministry. Uh, such as uh, they include the Youth Parliament of Malaysia, Malaysia Future Leader School, which is model of the Japan Future Leader School for the high achiever, my corps, where the young Malaysia are sent to developing country to volunteer in community building, and the Yellow Ribbon Program, where selected former convicts, convicts about to release or juvenile are given a second chance to gain work experience to be integrated into the society. For today's event, I wish to deep dive into the Youth Parliament of Malaysia. It is structured simulation of the parliamentary proceeding of the Parliament of Malaysia for youth aged between 18 to 25 years old to give young people an insight into the working of the Parliament. What more important is pertinent issues debate by members in the Youth Parliament will be then brought up to the Parliament of Malaysia for, for further debate. Besides, Another platform provide for Malaysia youth related issue to be discussed at ministerial level is through the National Youth Consultative Council. An annual cons consultation event between youth and minister concerns is allowed for government work and policy.
proof. Ladies and gentlemen, in most countries, prevention of violence and crime fall under the responsibility of security agencies such as the police force, whose action will be checked again by the legal institution such as the Attorney General Office and the Judiciary. Nevertheless, it is regrettable to note that the United Nations have established a fact that among the institutions most affected by corruption and many innocent could have been incarcerated at this present moment due to abuse of power. So this abuse of power by the authorities is therefore a critical issue that all responsible government need to address. That comes to important of the role of independent oversight bodies can help in making government accountable and transparent in all their actions according to the laws of the land that have been passed by representatives of the people. Ladies and gentlemen, in Malaysia, the Enforcement Agency Integrity Commission was established by an Act of Parliament, Enforcement Agency Integrity Commission Act 2009, to inculcate enhanced integrity officer and law enforcement agencies. Since the Act came into force, the Commission has begun to carry out the function which In the vibrant democracy, apart from passing laws, Parliament also plays an important role in making the government transparent and accountable. Parliament can hold cabinet minister, civil servant and government agencies answerable for their policies and action. It could perform this oversight function by establ establishing permanent parliamentary committee with the power to question minister and their civil servants. The Parliament could also conduct public inquiries on matters that are of wide public concern such as the serious financial scandal involving the integrity of the, gov of the government. I'm certain many governments are doing their best to meet Goal 16 of the SDG, creating peaceful environment within the framework of institutions that are clean, transparent and accountable is indeed vital for political and socio-economic stability. With extensive involvement of you, they are the greatest wealth and strength of any nation. In closing, I wish all speakers a fruitful and productive discussion. Our wish is only one, to have responsible governments as an enabler for peaceful and just society that are vital for holistic development of all countries and to have young people who can continue the positive character of citizen for the next generation towards creating social justice. With that, and with thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Azman. Um, just want to share with you, um, Dr. Azman uh, serving for the government of Malaysia uh, for more than 20 years. And now uh, he is the Secretary General for uh, Ministry of Youth and Sports Malaysia. But before that, he deeply involved with uh, the um, development of the federal territory, mainly um, focused on the housing for the, for the uh, people in the cities. So you can imagine this uh, Dato Azman serving to the minister were very, very much um, younger than, than, than the officer. This is Malaysia. And um, maybe you know uh, better than me that Malaysia now have the oldest prime minister in the world with the age 94. But the prime minister appoints a very young person 
with the age of 26 to lead the youth. This is how the Malaysian government empowered young people. So thank you, Dato, for your words. And um, this has uh, become a guidance to you to understand about governance. So let's I introduce um, a giveaway to Mr. Uh, Martin Ik, youth delegate from Norway. Mr. Uh, Martin, maybe for the first round, you can um, introduce yourself and share with us what are you doing in your organization and what is the um, impact program to, 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 the, to the youth in, in your country that maybe we can uh, uh, practice and, and, and learn from you. Thank you, Martin. Yeah. Okay, can everyone hear me? Okay, great. So my name's uh, Martin. Uh, I am a youth delegate, uh, UN youth delegate in urbanism from Norway, and I'm here representing Norwegian youth organizations. Uh, the Norwegian Council for Children and Youth uh, are really interested in having greater participation uh, with uh, between local governments and youth. And there are several ways you can do this in Norway. I was thinking I can talk about two very different ways of doing it. Uh, what recognizes them, uh, what separates them, uh, just so you can get a little bit feel uh, of how it is. So, uh, the first one is Norway, they mandated it, so by law you need to have a youth council in every county. They have to be included in every matter relating to youth. Uh, they do not have a final say, but they have to be listened to and respected. Uh, and I've been including one of those myself. So I was leading a youth council at the age of 13. And during my tenure, we ended up creating a better community for my local county uh, by creating more recreational offers. And we also protected the forest so it wouldn't get built houses there instead of having a place we could uh, be recreational in. Um, and I think the other uh, way of doing also local governance is a little bit more innovative and new. Uh, we pilot this in Oslo right now, uh, we call it, um, or we combine uh, innovation and youth uh, while still being kind of hooked into the local governance and we call this for neighborhood incubators. So basically we give youth the tools to empower themselves and their community with support from the local government. So this is a program that is controlled by the youth, there are participatory budgeting rounds uh, and they get the support they need to create the offers they want. Uh, so the incubator um, connects the local youth with the relevant stakeholders uh, to make lasting social and economic impacts in the neighborhoods where we have them. Uh, and I mean, these are two very different uh, models. One is very top down, the youth council, and one is very bottom up, uh, but they still uh, share uh, the same building blocks. Uh, so earlier today, they talked about uh, listen, link, and learn uh, in the Norwegian Youth Council, we have five points that we feel are extremely important to have real uh, youth influence in governance. And those are independence, that youth must decide what they want to engage in. Uh, they will set the agenda. Uh, representation, the youth will decide who will represent them. And the youth that are representing other youth will also be held accountable by the youth that have chosen them. Uh, we have... Um, see uh, competence which is that the youth have expertise that no one else have and that must be recognized uh, and we have information which is basically that the youth need to get complete and full information uh, so they can make a well-informed choice and we also have continuity which is one event or one process one workshop isn't enough that is not real inclusivity uh, youth must be included at all levels in all parts of the local political processes thank you Thank you, Martin. Um, yeah, it's good. I'm happy to to hear more from you about listen, link, and learn. Uh, the basic uh, thing in um, Norway youth delegates. After this, we'll um, go back to you because you know Norway is one of the happiest country in the world. So maybe you want to know the secret behind that. So second speaker, um, I want to give way to our. Actually, my, my old friend, we in uh, Nairobi before, uh, last year, um, during the first assembly um, for UN Habitat, Mr. Roman Chukov, Friends of Cities. I think everybody wants to make friends with you, uh, Roman. <laughs> uh, so 
please introduce yourself and your organization. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? It's a very interesting system uh, when you don't hear anything and nobody uh, hope this innovation is for better. Let's see <laughs> how it works. And uh, yes, thank you so much for these kind words. Uh, a big pleasure and honor to be here. And of course, big pleasure to come from minus 10 to plus uh, 27 from Moscow. Yes, I'm pretty happy now. And uh, I believe that uh, sustainable cities require a good climate. So in this regard, United Arab Emirates is a perfect host for such events. Um, as was mentioned, um, I represent Friends of Cities, which is uh, our pilot project uh, by the bigger network, which is called Friends for Leadership. Um, a little history. Um, when we speak about inclusion of youth to governance, it's always uh, putting us in the position uh, of uh, asking to be included somewhere, uh, to sit uh, on the bigger table, uh, try to influence somehow. But uh, I think we, many of us, and uh, we can strive uh, to do so, uh, to be self-sufficient, to actually uh, realize some projects by ourselves. We do not need uh, somebody else to guide this. Uh, and by us, I mean uh, these uh, young activists, young people, and not only young people, but uh, generally uh, civil society and uh, business uh, and academia leaders worldwide, civil uh, servants as well, just active citizens who want to make their life uh, better and help uh, to improve the life of others, also contributing to the uh, local communities where they live in. And um, my experience of 11 years of involvement to the UN, G20, BRICS and all other possible uh, youth engagement events gave me just one clear idea that we always talk about sharing the best practices and um, I never saw somebody who will just give me step one, step two, step three best practice, how I can implement it at home. Some real easy to do solution. That's why we decided to create such network for scalable solutions. And I really want uh, everybody here and generally um, to contribute and uh, be part of this open network, a horizontal network. Uh, Friends for Leadership is the network science, uh, Friends of Technology with scalable solutions in each of them. And Friends of Um, I personally, as international relations um, uh, scholar, I believe that cities are already becoming the global actors and uh, maybe even more important than governments. In some cases, you know, Moscow, London or Kuala Lumpur or New York, uh, yeah, they are some, some, sometimes even uh, more, uh, let's say, even bigger players than their governments and countries. Even here, you can see on the Russia's case uh, in the exhibition area, go and compare the um, uh, exhibition stand of Moscow and Russia. You will you'll understand what I mean. They are just two different worlds. Uh, Moscow is the city and uh, the country. And uh, by the way, yes, on the Russian stand on um, Monday at uh, 3 p.m. we will have Friends of Cities session. So please come. There you will see those people and those projects which are scalable, which you can go and take uh, to your home. Uh, I will mention just one little project, for instance, uh, the Clean Games project. Yes, which uh, my friend uh, Dmitry from St. Petersburg uh, makes and you can do it at home. Uh, they organize volunteers and teams with uh, social activists with some uh, territory which needs to be cleaned up and uh, they make a game who e uh, faster and more efficiently clean this territory uh, they win very easy to do and uh, it can help us uh, use our energy uh, to actually make uh, our li life of our neighborhood better so very easy to do please you can implement it at home, cleangames.ru, for instance, yes? And many, many other projects. Uh, some, some of our uh, entrepreneurs, they produce new batteries. Uh, one of the projects, uh, the guy produces uh, one um, uh, soft solution for all smart house uh, devices and systems to put it uh, all together. So it's very easy and uh, convenient to use. So, and um, one of the ideas was to uh, make some institutional cooperation with uh, the UN Habitat because uh, we believe that uh, UN system is...
uh, organizations, which includes all the stakeholders. Uh, please uh, join our efforts and support uh, our ideas, because I believe that it's better we not only talk about uh, youth governance, but take governance in our hands and just start driving these ch uh, changes, overcoming challenges in our everyday life to help each other. And yeah, uh, thank you, Roman. And congratulations to you also for your um, forum in Ekaterinburg. You yes. talk about um, new renewable energy, and I'm so sorry because we, because cannot be there. Thank you, Roman. I will be with you again. Um, you talk about see um, cities or mega cities character is very important. That's why we need to shape our attitude and character and focus because our character will define the whole global. Uh, we again, uh, uh, going back to our uh, third speaker, Rafael Obonio. Before this, he is the, um, the moderator in other event. Now, he will become the uh, panel speaker's panel uh, for this event. Mr. Rafael Obonio from the Youth Congress Kenya, so Hakuna Matata. Thank you. Uh, this um, floor with you. Thank, Thank you. you so very much and uh, uh, quite excited to be on this panel uh, discussing issues of youth and governance. I think like uh, uh, the other panelists have commented and alluded to, it is very important to include youth uh, in uh, matters governance. Uh, and uh, I just want to flag three important things that why I think it is important to include youth in um, in governance and then what we are doing as uh, as the youth congress one is something that i already uh, commented on or mentioned in uh, the previous uh, discussions and engagement is that youth are not inadequate simply because they do not have experience uh, we must see youth as adequate because of the fresh ideas that they have uh, because of the creativity that they have because of the talent that they have for that reason we should not sideline them uh, because they do not have experience. Experience and fresh ideas uh, are equally important in, uh, in matters uh, governance. That's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, for a long time I think the society thought that by excluding the youth, it is the youth who are suffering or it is the youth who are uh, facing negative consequences. But we must realize that by excluding the youth, the society itself is uh, deprived of uh, uh, important I ingredients that youth provide and like I said fresh ideas, uh, creativity, talent, you know, innovation. So by excluding the youth, uh, it is not just youth who are suffering, so it is not just youth who are complaining. The society itself should join youth in complaining by saying, look, because youth are not involved in governance, because youth are in not involved in these processes, there is a way our society uh, is not uh, moving forward, like as uh, has been said. So youth exclusion uh, also means that uh, we are excluding, uh, I mean, we, are, we, are, we, we cannot move forward as a, as a society. And if you look at uh, a continent like Africa that is quite, uh, quite youthful, you find that in some countries like my very own country, Kenya, 80% of the population is under the age of, uh, of 35. It means that if you want to move the country forward, uh, whether you're talking about development or whether you're talking about governance, then you cannot ignore youth, both in terms of their numbers, but also in terms of, uh, of, uh, of their ideas. And my last uh, preliminary point is that uh, youth are not in the waiting room, you know, waiting for people to do things for them so that they can join. And uh, for a long time, uh, we've been told that youth are leaders of tomorrow or we are developing programs at the national and the county level so that once we are done, we are go youth are going to benefit. But you, youth, youth are not just seated waiting across the world. We've seen youth who are doing amazing stuff, uh, whether you're talking about issues of climate change or whether you're talking about issues of governance, youth are doing uh, things, are coming up with various initiatives at their own level amidst many challenges. So I think the thought that youth are seated somewhere waiting, uh, I think it's a misperception. So I think we really need to start uh, appreciating the work that youth are doing and start partnering with them in, uh, in the various works uh, or plans or pr and programs and policies that we are coming up with uh, to move our, our, our cities, uh, cities forward. As the Youth Congress, 
mentioned that uh, I'm part of and we, uh, uh, we've been doing quite a bit of work in terms of ensuring that youth are involved in, uh, in, uh, in governance. One is to push uh, that youth have a seat at the table. Because if youth do not have a seat at the table, then it becomes very difficult to address matters. Uh, 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 coming from Kenya, we are, we've been able to push to the extent that we have a provision in the constitution uh, that recognizes the importance of youth invol involvement in governance. We have special seats uh, for, for youth. We are trying to push to promote, uh, uh, promote youth leadership, and not just in terms of age also, and that is important, that youth leadership that is based not just on age, but also on vision and values, so that people can start appreciating that if you have a youth in a position, then uh, this is a youth who is also bringing in vision, who is bringing in uh, great ideas. So we've been able to push for that. The other thing is to, so that we're also mentoring uh, young people who can participate in, in, in decision making at, uh, at different, uh, different levels. We've also been able to push that we have sort of a, a, an institution or a body that represents youth because part of the problem has been if you want to get to involve youth then how do you, how do you get this youth? And so we've been able to push for, for example, uh, Kenya now has a national youth council and uh, one of the things is that that, that, that is a body, uh, if it is effective enough, that is supposed to help in terms of uh, championing youth issues, but also uh, giving youth perspectives, mobilizing and organizing, uh, organizing youth. And lastly is the issue of the youth policy. Uh, Kenya developed a youth policy in 2006, and uh, it, it, for, a, for a long time it wasn't uh, updated or reviewed, so it was out of date. But we've been able to push for the review of the youth policy. Now we have a uh, uh, Kenya youth development uh, policy. Though developed at the national level, it, it involves the various local authorities. And the idea of having a policy is that a, fo a policy provides a solid foundation for programming, for, I mean for planning, programming, budgeting, and even holding leaders accountable. Be because without a policy, uh, any youth program that is coming up depends on uh, the goodness of the, of, of the person in, uh, in, uh, in the office. So uh, the Youth Congress have been trying to push for, you know, policy uh, formulation and implementation, development of a body that represents, uh, represents, uh, represents youth, and lastly just helping young people to be better organized to engage. Because again, unlike the women's movement that uh, globally, regionally, and even at our co country levels that, is, uh, that has, has been quite organized, you'll find that uh, the youth uh, movement or youth haven't been so organized in a way that they can be able to engage and push and uh, certain agendas and make make claim and so what the youth congress has been doing also is to try youth to be better uh, to mobilize the youth to organize the youth to coordinate the youth so that they can be able to engage better on matters uh, matters governance thank you so much thank you rafael yeah i was in kenya three times before and I love the, the scenario uh, because, you know, um, Kenya people have a very good spirit. All the long distance um, champion from, from Kenya. I cannot believe how people in Kenya going, go to, to the, the office by running. <laughs> okay, thank you, Rafael. I will uh, get back to you. Okay, maybe I can offer to the floor if you have any uh, idea or any uh, question or want to to share something about what we discuss now please i give you any anybody yeah please can can you give this uh, mic to um our brother can you introduce yourself from where and then uh, thank you yeah, thank please. you yeah it's okay yeah i can hear you yeah. thank you my name is george i'm from zimbabwe I work for an organization called Dialogue on Shelter. I would like to agree with the issues that were being presented by the last speaker relating to issues of organizing and mobilizing the youth. I think it's very important for youths to be organized because by being organized, the youth then can have the louder voice that will enable them to be heard. But I think also more importantly, beyond just being organized, Youths also have to use very practical examples through which they demonstrate their capacity, their agents. 
through which they can then begin conversations that can lead to policy influencing. I think youth agents can only be reflected through practical initiatives that youth then do in their local communities. And this is something that we are doing through a project that is being supported by Plan International in about four cities, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Ethiopia, and Uganda, whereby youths are being organized around very practical demonstrations that focus on addressing issues of safety in cities. So I think one element that I felt is also important in bringing out is how do you organize youths around practical initiatives which resonate with the experiences of the, of, of the young people. So that's one element. Secondly, I think what is also important is also beyond existing formal structures that enable participation of youths, there is also need for creating alternative spaces that are, are friendly to youth. And these are spaces that you find in, in communities where these youth stay. You bring uh, uh, decision makers into these spaces that youths are capable to relate to, where they are comfortable to articulate their issues rather than in some alien spaces where they find it very difficult to, to be at home and articulate their issues. So I think that's also uh, critical to, to come up with uh, invented, if I can put that way, spaces which are friendlier to, 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 to youth so that they are able to articulate their issues. So those are some of the experiences that we have learned through a project that is being supported by Plan International. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, you, you talk about friendly space um, facilities and I want to invite you George come to my center in International Youth Center we really provide you a very friendly um, facilities uh, with um, a cost not more than uh, 10 USD a day you can stay in our uh, backpackers rooms and if you don't have enough money the uh, youth can work volunteer five hours in our center and then you can get one night stay in Kuala Lumpur. This is uh, how we make a policy to the youth around the world to come and, and, and experience their, their stay um, in, at international level. Thank you, Josh. Um, anybody want to, or I can share, uh, compose uh, another question or idea from, from the um, uh, floor? I can briefly. Yeah, Roman, please. I would like please, to Roman. agree yeah. with you. It's very important, uh, also, yeah, to incentivize youth to support, to uh, mobilize, and uh, as I mentioned before, what we try to do in France for Leadership, we want uh, to uh, engage these youth, which are ready to do something. Um, we want to gather, and we are gathering already those who already proved that they are efficient in what they are doing, and which want to share with the world what they can do and let others join. So uh, let's get back to this uh, conversation after session with all those who want and to again come to our session on Monday so that you can be part of it. Thank you, Roman. Uh, sure, Martin, you, you have something, please. Yeah, uh, I just want to quickly add, I think it's a really good idea to uh, create uh, like spaces for youth that they can feel safe in and invite politician in there and I think uh, some of this work is already being done so we have something called the mayor's hour where the mayor will uh, come out of her uh, or his office uh, and meet the constituents. Uh, a problem sometimes with that is that uh, especially relating to say spatial planning uh, where you have people working on the big city plan they will go out in the city and try to meet people but then they will go home at four o'clock but where are all the youth until four o'clock? They're at school, so um, so I think that's a really good point that uh, the decision makers uh, have to come to the youth at their uh, places and not the other way around, because then you won't get any good input. Thank you. Yeah, that's it, please. Maybe I want to add uh, some uh, information. Uh, I do agree with the uh, our brother and uh, experience of Malaysia. We have the platform to hear the voice of uh, youth. That's why just uh, like what I mentioned in my keynote speech uh, just now, that we have in Malaysia the National Youth Consultative Council, which is we give the platform to the uh, youth and the young people to give the idea. And we also have the uh, youth parliament uh, session, which is we uh, like uh, they can uh, debate 
all the issue in the parliament and we collect all the information before we uh, come to uh, create the policy uh, to the youth, uh, important of the youth. And uh, we also have the NGO, which is uh, uh, two big NGO in Malaysia. This is the former president of the Youth Council of Malaysia. And we now, uh, our minister also launched uh, the new uh, NGO, uh, which is uh, will carry out uh, the issue of the youth. Uh, we call it the Youth Power Club. All, all this platform uh, in Malaysia, we used to get all information, which is uh, we engage with the youth to get, on information, get all the information before we create the policy for them. That's why I think, I, I do believe with you, we have to engage with the youth. We cannot deny their voice before we come out with this uh, good policy for them. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. Thank you for your inputs. Uh, Rafael, anything from you? Please. Yeah. Please. Yeah, just just uh, uh, a quick one. I think one is, uh, I mean, youth friendly, but also youth responsive. It's uh, equally uh, very important. Uh, like the terminologies are now involving, the phrases are involved. I mean, revolve. I mean, evolving. So, youth responsive. But the point you make of engaging youth at their points of convenience is very, very important. That we must not just invite youth to the center. We must also go to where youth uh, youth are. And one of the things we've been doing with the youth congress is to do what we call community dialogue circles. Because what we've discovered over years is that uh, if you invite youth to a workshop or a conference you will get the raphaels you know and you will continue getting the raphaels who can speak who can engage who can but the issue we are discussing are not just issues that stop at engaging raphael they are issues that need to engage youth in their diversity so then how do we yes do things that we are doing at the center but also try to get out of the center and reach out to youth in their spaces of convenience and in the in the context of urbanization if you're talking about youth in the urban slums for example uh, if you want to address the challenges facing uh, people in the urban slums uh, you the youth that you might want to engage are not necessarily the raphaels so then how do you create programs that are able to reach out to these youth who are, when you talk about marginality mapping, youth who are actually at the periphery, you know. So it's very, very uh, important what you're talking about, reaching youth in their spaces of convenience. But even other than that, you look at uh, today's social media. Uh, young people are more present on social media than on physical spaces that you're talking about. So how do we again uh, try to come up, whether we're talking about uh, plans at the national or at the, uh, I mean, at the uh, city level, you know, local authority, how then can we also start adopting this as uh, 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 platforms for engagement? Back in Kenya, again, we have what we call the public participation, which is now a constitutional uh, provision that uh, no policy or budget can uh, be developed without uh, public participation. But then the approach is still the old way of wanting people to gather at a, at a, at a, at a meeting or a, in a room for them to be able to share their views. But you find that the generation that you are dealing with uh, wants to share their ideas on Twitter. 140 characters and they're done with you. They're telling you what they want to see in the cities. So if you're waiting for them to come to, uh, to sit in a room and share their perspectives, you might never be able to, to get them. So then how can we also start adopting some of these uh, channels as also uh, mechanisms and uh, platforms for engagement? And lastly is, as much as we want young people to participate, sometimes we youth also need some sort of um, enablers. They also need to be supported with capacity for them to be able to engage more effectively. Uh, and so informed engagement, informed participation uh, of young people is very, very important. So that it is not enough to say we now have a youth representative or we now have a seat at the table for the youth or we've created a slot for the youth. How do we enable these youth so that when they are at that platform, they are able to engage effectively? I think for me that is very, very important. And our various organizations and uh, institutions and stakeholders can help in terms of supporting young people to be able to, be, to engage in a more informed, uh, informed way. Thank you. Thank you, Rafael. Before I give um, another chance to, to the floor to give the reflection, maybe this is the last round to our panel uh, to give anything inputs in, in this. Uh, please, Martin, you first. Yeah. I think it's relating to 
anything that maybe you you want to raise yeah yeah i think um it's very good when you have public participation and youth but i also think it's important to be a little bit critical of it not of public participation or participation but when you are given the chance so i uh i think i just remember i think that's important that even though you're maybe allowed the voice sometimes it's important to also ask yourself when are they asking you for your opinion has maybe the legislation already been drafted are they just doing this for show if we want true participation and good youth governance we need to demand that we are there from day one and not just being added in a meeting when the process is done yeah thank you martin this is the continuous process by before this you uh, tell us about listen link and learn yeah to make it uh, sustainable uh, this is a a uh, continuous process that never, never stop. Thank you. And now, uh, Mr. Roman, um, maybe another round for you to, to, to say? Oh, uh, many thanks again for hosting this session. Uh, I believe that uh, we, we should speak about it. We should do it. We should not only support young people on all levels uh, of inclusion, but uh, as I previously mentioned, I believe we should take responsibility in our hands and do the changes uh, by our efforts and we will uh, receive uh, all the legitimacy which we uh, might need yes we just need to work we just need to do our job yes just to save the world uh, by our everyday uh, contribution by our everyday fair uh, job by uh, our cooperation uh, by making uh, fruitful uh, uh, connections even right here and do some positive change. Let's just let it all happen, uh, what was uh, mentioned here, and uh, not uh, sit or stay and wait when somebody uh, will, will give us uh, some authority or legitimacy or some support. Just go and do whatever you want, uh, which you believe in. Thank you, Roman. Um, that's why uh, in this forum, if you have anything you want to, to, to share and you want anything um, in your mind, you can share in hashtag Wolf10 or hashtag governance Wolf10. We need more Greta Thunberg, we need more Malala Yousafzai to say about this world. So this is the best um, place that we can share. You need to understand that we are here, but some young people out there don't have ability to come. Cannot buy for a ticket. They want to come here, but they cannot uh, give their voice in this forum. So we need to understand this is the solidarity among us to bring more young people voices. So Raphael, from you, Lars? I think for me is uh, one, I think youth, youth inclusion is no longer a privilege. I think it's more of a right now. Uh, in 2020, it's not a favor to include the youth, I think it's more of a, of, a, of a right and an opportunity for the society also to move forward. So I think we should look at it in that way. But to also uh, to appreciate that the world has been moving and different countries have been trying to involve the youth. And uh, just take, for example, the issue of leadership. Across the world, leaders are becoming younger and younger. We just saw what happened in Finland the other day. You know, we have a very young prime minister. Uh, when they took a photo with the cabinet, people almost thought that was a quartet of some sort. They want to release an album, you know, because they look so young. Uh, in Austria, we have a very young prime minister in, uh, in, in his 30s. Uh, New Zealand, uh, the, the prime minister is in her 30s, elected at 34, 35. And we can go on and on, and not just in, uh, uh, in that part of the world. In Africa, we have many, many young leaders who are, who, are, who, are, who are coming up, or young people who are taking up position. I think the challenge that we have as young people is, uh, and uh, like my friend from Russia was saying, what do we do? 
whenever we get these opportunities. I think we also have a responsibility to make sure that when we get responsibility of uh, representation and leadership that we truly uh, do what is required of us to serve and to leave uh, the impression that truly if you give youth a chance, then uh, you're going to see some change. So that we must also use the opportunity that we, we, we are accorded uh, in the cities and at other levels to make some impact, to make a difference, and to help the society move forward. So perhaps that is my challenge to fellow youth who are here. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Um, I will miss you and your border border in, in Kenya. Um, before I give uh, last words to uh, Dr. Asman, maybe from the floor. Uh, good day to you all. My name is Glenn from Zimbabwe. I actually live in Epworth. Uh, I, uh, uh, as a youth, I have engaged in a number of activities for the safety of my community. To start with, my community has been prone to a number of uh, crime activities and violence. So to address that, as youth, we actually decided to form groups, and the groups that we formed were according to our interests and um, talents. So the groups are actually advocating for safety. And by so doing, we have uh, engaged uh, policymakers and local authorities. So it's like um, on the examples, uh, for instance, uh, on criminal cases, we're having robbers um, and uh, robbery cases, mugging cases, and um, major cases. So on those cases, we went to the police and reported. And the police, they said that they could assist us with dogs. The police dogs. So we actually volunteered to build dog kennels and uh, after doing so the police helped us with the dogs and now our communities are uh, they're actually now safe and we also volunteered to have police patrols at night so that we can make our communities safe. So yeah thank you Glenn. Give applause to, to Glenn. Thank you. Yeah please maybe um, another uh, participant please yeah in, in the middle please. Thank you so much. Wow. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm Tatenda from Zimbabwe. Tatenda from Zimbabwe. Uh, from an organization, also First Association. So what we do to encourage youth uh, in, in governance is we use art as a tool to mobilize young people. And like we use festivals, we use road shows, whereby young people they are coming for to attend the road show or the festival. At the same time, also be disseminating information for them to be active participants. And also, we engage like local authorities, the councillors. Sometimes we engage provincial authorities, like the provincial administrators or a, a provincial directors of different ministries to come and hear what the youth are they are like the issues that are the challenges that are affecting young people so this is what we do we use art to mobilize the people and then we also in, invite like authorities to come to the event and then the two they interface this is what we do thank you thank you tashinda you are using arts for engaging youth thank you it's very good i i can open another two maybe please at my left brother Maybe you have anything inside your mind? I know you have. Please. Oh, you want me to give you matoke? <laughs> Please. <laughs> give, give, give the. Um, uh, brother, I know, I know. Give, give away first. Yeah, I know. I can read your mind. <laughs> Thank you, brother. I'm Akigbe Yoluatola from Nigeria. Nigeria. And basically, uh, in Nigeria, we have issues. Uh, that has to do with uh, uh, in which the youth are not really involved in governance. And uh, this is due, due to the fact that uh, the policies of the government and some other things that are com come into place. And basically, I have a question from one of, the, one of the panelists that is from Kenya. He raised one issue on the issue of National Youth Council, in which we have a replica of that in Nigeria. He talked about, he said, yeah, as a question, he talked about if effective, that is the National Youth Council. So this is my question, how can it be effective in which we have effects on our continent and on the globe, global stage at large? 
That's my question, sir. Okay, thank you, Makime. I directly uh, go to Rafael before, after that, we'll go to you, brother. Please, Rafael. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks so much, our brother from Nigeria. Uh, actually, in Nigeria, they say build the youth and build the nation. And if you want to build the nation, you must build the, build the youth. The question of National Youth Council. Across Africa, countries have been trying to set up uh, National Youth Council. This is also as part of uh, the Africa, uh, African Union Charter uh, that provided for youth charter, that provided for the establishment of the National Youth Council. Uh, in terms of uh, models, many countries now have National Youth Council, but in terms of effectiveness, I think uh, there have been questions of effectiveness of the National Youth, uh, Youth Council. Why? First, they lack autonomy, so you find that uh, some of the National Youth Councils that have been established, instead of representing the youth, they are complementing the government, uh, and so that has been a problem. The other thing is, has been uh, the problem of electing officials to the National Youth Council. You'll find that elections are supposed to be done at various levels, right from the sub-location all the way to the national level. Uh, but most of these elections are always either mismanaged or you find that it is not youth who can be lead, who, let me put it as youth who can represent the youth who go for this position. It ends up being youth who perhaps can be able to fund their campaigns or who are funded to campaign. So eventually you'll find that Raphael is elected to, to be in the National Youth Council not because he can be the best person to represent the youth but because he had the most monies to engage in the campaigns and that way we do not have effective uh, re uh, representative. And third is that because National Youth Councils rely on resources from government in many cases, in many countries in Africa. Government decides on uh, the agenda of the National Youth Council. So it's a tap, and the government will decide when you're supporting them, the tap will be opened. When you're not supporting them, the tap will be closed. And so because uh, you also want the tap to be opened, many young people in the National Youth Council start dancing to the tunes of the government and leaving the sacred role of representing, uh, representing the youth. So that has been a challenge, and there has been discussions on how do we come up with models that truly work for the youth in a way that National Youth Councils are able to run their programs programs effectively because they have finances, uh, uh, but they are also able to hold the government accountable because, let's face it, many governments across the world don't like very organized youth, and especially if these youth are holding them to account. It becomes very difficult. You are good for as long as you are doing your thing and not bothering on what they are what they are doing. So I think the challenge is how do we deal, create a model that is going to address uh, effective representation, uh, independent representation in terms of getting uh, youth who are independent and are representing the youth, but also how do we resource national youth councils? Unless we do that, then I think it will become very, very difficult. And sadly, is that, and uh, we were doing a study of the national youth councils in Africa, there is no single national youth council that you can say this National Youth Council is so effective. We thought for a long time that Nigeria's National Youth Council was effective. When we did a study there, young people said, ah, we did Zambia, they said, Kenya now, uh, my, my home country, we don't even have a National Youth I mean, we have it on paper, but in terms of uh, effectiveness, it's not uh, effective because we did uh, uh, elect officials in 2013 and for the last many years now it's seven years later there hasn't been any other election people who are elected are no longer youth so they've moved into other spaces and they've not been any attempt to fill in those spaces so i think it's a challenge but uh, that is not to say that the national youth council as an institution or as a body is not a good uh, a good platform very important but then how do we make them more effective thank you thank you rafael before i give to that um, I give my way to our brother in the middle, please. Hello. Yeah. Um, right. I'm sure you all can hear me. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> as much as I can't hear you. Uh, I'm Kasper from uh, Zimbabwe, and I represent uh, Youth Alliance for Safer Cities, which is a, a network of young people uh, who join together to form one big voice for the young people in Zimbabwe. So. One of our main focuses is to advocate for equal uh, distri distribution of resources to the young people by the people who are in, in, on, in authority. 
So like Tatinda said, we, we try to, to, to find uh, a lot of measures or different measures where we can provide a platform uh, for, 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 for an interface between the young people and the people who are in power. So one of the major problems that we realized was that most of the dialogues that we, 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 we conducted were very fruitful. We would call the people in power, the authorities, they would come on the table, we, we lay out our issues, and then they tell us what we want to hear. But after the dialogue, everyone goes home happy, but then there's no implementation of anything that, is, that has been discussed within the dialogue. So we realized that there was no much of uh, social accountability in whatever they were saying. So we realized ma the, the major problem, even when we went back to their offices to ask for whatever they, they had promised, you, you can't find them. You try to organize maybe a meeting with them, you can't find them. So we realized that uh, it was very, very important that whenever we host uh, something, we need to have a documentation that states that uh, this person said this. That's when we, we also started to work uh, even with Plan International. There's a component that they, they call communication for development. So whenever we now have a dialogue with them, we, we document everything. If it means it's a video, it's a video. We try to create a space where, because a politician is a politician, no matter which post. So we try by all means to make them say what we want to hear, but documenting whatever that they're saying. And after the, 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 the platform, we realized that we, we also need to, to create petitions so that whenever they say whatever they say, we also give them a petition where they, they sign that I am committing to do this. So we give them their copy, we are left behind with our copy. So after that, we start now making follow-ups to say, uh, say, you remember us, yeah, we once had a meeting with you, this is what you promised. So we are now seeing that uh, on this and that, uh, this has not been achieved. But we are thinking that if we do it this way, it can happen. Because most of the time, they need solutions. Those, they are good at saying things, but they don't have solutions. So it's, it's, it's we, we saw that it's much good for us as young people to try and find solutions before we visit them. So that whenever we go there, we have uh, proposed solutions so that they buy into our solutions. They think that they thought of, of it, but at the same time, it's good, it's good for us. So that is how we are also working in Zimbabwe. Thank you. Thank you, Casper. Give applause to Casper. I believe Casper, um, Tashinda, and Glenn, you come from the same, I think, same uh, country. You will become a very good um, synergy to your community, inshallah. So, Dato, uh, with this, Dato, uh, maybe you want to give your um, conclusion um, for this um, session. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Maliki. Just a simple conclusion. Uh, just give an example of Malaysia. Malaysia population is about more, uh, more than 33 million, and uh, about 35 to 37% is youth. So we can see how important of the youth in the uh, country. And uh, for the last word for, from me, I just want to say that youth are very valuable asset for nation and youth also is about the future of any nation in the world. With that, I, I very, uh, I, I'm very proud if the youth can come together with the government to uh, plan the big picture for the youth and you can provide something value to the government to achieve together for the development. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. Can you give applause to Dato? Yeah. So, um, as a closing remark from me, I want to say thank you to all of you. Um, and I hope uh, we can engage more uh, because for us, uh, the International Youth Center of Malaysia, we are also the uh, headquarter office for Asian Youth Council and we have very good engagement with World Assembly of Youth, uh, where the Asian Youth um, Commission also in, in, in the, in the um, organization. So me, myself, also as a, a secret, Secretary General for the Asia, uh, Asia, Asian Youth Council, sorry, AYC, um, I will bring these um, matters uh, to the, uh, our um, organization also, because Actually, we talk at the same um, element, we, we the, the same direction, and 
we need to compose everything. So I hope um, this is a fruitful um, discussion uh, between us and we didn't stop here and please we can discuss and share everything because what we did uh, today will give benefit to our young people in all over the world. 1.3 billion population is young people. We need to create the landscape for ourselves and give the decision to us. So thank you very much again to UN Habitat and for International Youth Center. Um, I want to call um, Dato to give some momento to our speaker. Um, please, Dato. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for this wonderful experience. I believe the questions which we discussed here at World Ulma Forum on the Youth Governance Session by Malaysia is very important. And I believe that everything which we discuss here we will bring into effect and reality and we will change the world and make our city sustainable.